With me today is Tim and Tannis Roberts. They actually are not caregivers turned creators. They are creators that recognized a need in our world and filled it. They have an app called Echo Box, and that's what we're going to chat about this afternoon. So thank you guys for joining me. They're all the way in Calgary. I'm in Northern California. Thank you very much for having us. For You're having. welcome. So you you didn't find a personal need to create this app. So why, why did you start the app? Most, most of us kind of do it as a self-care. This is a tool I need kind of caregiving process, but you came about it from a different angle. So why don't we start there? Right. Um, well, I guess it would have gone back to about 2015 and just it was simple as watching a YouTube video. Uh, an older gentleman had the recording of his wife's voice <clears throat> on an answering machine. And uh, when his service provider had to reboot their system or, or upgrade, it lost all of the recordings on everyone. So they had to make another recording. So not a big deal for most people, but for him, he lost the sound of his wife's voice. And so the video we saw uh, showed him uh, getting it back. The tech team uh, dug it out of you know all these deleted files and found it for him. And uh, seeing him get it back was just you know it's just a, it was a, a emotional and it was uh, it was great to see. But it also kind of it brought into focus this idea that uh, you know seniors have so many stories to tell and um, you know Facebook isn't really going to provide that for them. That there isn't you know technology and, and seniors don't necessarily go hand in hand all the time it's it's uh, you know it's actually most of the you know the powerhouses in social media out there are, are trying to focus on the younger generations and all this and so we just thought you know how many stories are being lost in memories and how valuable is that and so um originally we figured well we could try to make some sort of grief support uh app so that when someone passes away, if they put in all these things they love about life, like their favorite songs and recipes and um, in a realm where you're not going to be advertised to or a third party is going to take all of your stuff away from you and all that, uh, then, then, hey, we can, you know, maybe uh, make uh, the discomfort uh, around death a little easier and uh, have, uh, you know, a tool here for people that uh, have lost someone special. And in the process of building this uh, platform, we realized it means so much more to other people um, that we're just kind of like hanging onto the coattails and, and, you know, seeing where it takes us. And uh, so, yeah, it's introduced us to many wonderful, hardworking people such as yourself. So uh, we um, are just, you know, um, we're trying not to be like, hey, look at our flashy little gizmo to all these people that are doing such incredible work, not celebrated, it's not glorious, like, uh, like we mentioned earlier. So um, it's been a huge eye opener for us. And most recently, uh, we've been hearing back from people like dementia care uh, specialists and Alzheimer's care groups that are just saying, this is more than a, than a grief support uh, platform. It has so many other qualities for people that are you know, alive, entering these memories, making this collection in this realm. Um, it has a lot more to do with you know, cognitive function and waking up like fresh uh, conversations. And so this was a bit, uh, it was like news to us. Like, so we keep on finding out what we've, what we're creating as it goes. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Yeah. Well, my paternal grandmother was always big on, you know, wanting to record stories. So of course, closer to the end of her life, I was trying to do just that. I have a, a lapel mic that plugs into my phone and I would use it on her because she spoke really softly and I had to yell because she was half deaf. And she passed away in April at 103. So we don't need a lot. It's like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, I don't know, she lives to be 103. I think that's a pretty good, good run. Wow. And one of the, I did manage to get a few recordings, but my favorite is when she's talking about my dad, her oldest son, who passed away before she did. He went on a, um, not a missionary trip, but kind of like a missionary trip through our Rotary Club, our Rotary organization to do, um, well, he was doing PR for the eye doctors who were doing cataract surgeries in Africa. He did that two years in a row. The second year, well, between the first and the second year, they decided, you know, they have to ship this, you know, medical chairs and, and cots and all this big bulky equipment. And so they had to fill a um, shipping container. So they got this wild idea that once the shipping container was there, they would turn it into a library. Now, my paternal grandmother was a head librarian at one of our local schools, and I did not know the, the amount of 
input. I mean, that woman, I think if you were sitting on the park bench and you finished a book and set it down, she snatched it. It's like, can I take this for the library in Africa? <laughs> <laughs> and she claimed that they named it after my dad. And I thought, oh, okay, yeah, that's nice. I'm not going to argue with her. You know, it's not, not worth it. And I wasn't sure. And turns out after she passed away, I found out they did name the library after my dad. So I have this story <laughs> from two people now that are gone. And it it was very nice to hear again after she passed away, because right at the end, it got a little bit frustrating. So you guys are not wrong about the stories. And then with my mom, I'm, I'm wondering, if, I think it would have helped if I could have said things like, oh, you're, you know, oh, yeah, you remember we used to make this favorite dish, whatever. I mean, I kind of know what they were, but my dad was a terrible eater. So I'm wondering if that would have helped connect better. That's how the podcast started. I was doing deep internet research, trying to find ways to connect with her so that when I visited her in the memory community, I didn't have to listen to, so what have you been up to lately? What have you been up to lately? <laughs> yeah. She would yep. say that literally every two minutes. And and I, I would say, I would tell her, I used, I used to go on Mondays and I would tell her, oh, I went to the gym this morning and did X. And then she asked me again, oh, well, you know, it's Monday. So I went to the Rotary meeting and that was nice. And then she'd ask it a third time. Well, I went to the Rotary meeting and so-and-so talked about X. <laughs> oh, okay. Then it would be Jim, Rotary. And now, I mean, I had about five answers and then I ran out of material. And <laughs> I just found that all of the suggestions, you know, the music and looking at photo albums, none of that stuff worked with her. It was awful. <laughs> right. So I, I started know. a podcast so I could talk to people and find out some other options that were easier. <laughs> So how did you guys, right. so you said this was in 2015, the app came out July of 2020. So did it take five years to create? No, it was more just five years for the idea to percolate because even initially we thought we may, maybe we'd go into nursing homes ourselves and record stories and then just provide that for people. And it, it just took a long time to evolve and figure out what platform we were actually going to use. And we are not techie people at all. I hardly have any apps on my phone. So uh, it is a whole new world. Yeah. It, you know, sometimes we get asked questions that quickly reveal how little we know about technology. And we're just, we have to just, you know, fess up and say, look, this is, it's the idea that brought us here. Um, we're learning as much as we can about, you know, marketing, uh, you know, building an advisory board, getting out there and like having a business plan, all sorts of things. Cause we were busy. We had our own jobs. We've got two young girls. So it wasn't like something we attacked with vigor right off the bat. It just slowly gained momentum. And then, um, uh, your parents, uh, my mother and father-in-law, just were crazy and kind enough to see enough promise in this to kind of help us out financially to get the ball rolling. And it's rolled to the point where it's just, it's evolving um, on a week-to-week -week basis, whether we're talking to gerontologists or death doulas or uh, psych, psych or sorry, psychologists or professors. Uh, it, everyone has a different sort of angle and we keep relearning what we've built. And so um, it's it's on one hand it's it's great. Uh, on the other hand, it's keeping us so busy. It's kind of like I don't know if a year has gone by any faster than this last year. And of course, with the pandemic, uh, it was difficult because everyone's trying to roll with the punches, and especially the healthcare sector. I mean, there was just they were swamped with so much to do, and it was probably the worst year possible to try to like get everyone's attention and be like, look at this colorful, cool thing that can help you have a good time. And they're like, are you serious right now? Like, you know, we have other things to do right now. <laughs> so it's been a learning process, but, um, but yeah, it, it, our calendar as the weeks go by are getting messier and messier. It's just like, with people, you know, zoom meetings and, and calls and conferences and then uh, being able to speak to groups and uh, it's been awesome. And so uh, yeah, we're just willing to, to roll with it. And the more people that it can help the better. And uh, we're just thrilled with, with how many kind of spokes and branches it seems to be growing. Well, why don't you tell us exactly what the app does? Cause we haven't, I know, cause I've looked at it <laughs> for those people who are like the what? Sure. Well, it's a without seeing it, it's a little hard, but we've tried to make it as simple as possible. It's basically we made an app that there's no advertising in. There's no uh, way to communicate with each other besides saying, um, do you want to see my Echo Box or I like to see your Echo Box? And what an Echo Box is, is basically just life kind of cut up into a whole bunch of different sections. So whether you want to talk about animals or outdoors or songs or recipes or movies or pets that you've had or 
uh, work projects that you've done and you know anything that we we could think of we made a subject for that so that users could go in and whether it's like your favorite song or your fourth favorite recipe or your mom's you know the family recipe that that you, that you didn't want to forget um you could reach in there and put uh you know a, a title and a description if there was a link to something on the web you can add that to your little description uh if you wished uh you can make recordings about it so there's you've got that aspect of uh you know if you're on a hike that you really love you can take a little video of of uh you know from the hilltop and then uh, if you want to record a little bit about how you you know every monday morning i liked my little walk uh, you know going here there the whole idea is you make this huge collection of, of things so that um, your contacts or family members or close friends can really dive into your world um, without any static, without any you know interference from the outside world with opinions and all this stuff and just kind of celebrate who you are or who you were if, if you've already passed away. And, you know, listen to some favorite songs and cook up something from a recipe book and sit down and watch one of your favorite movies and have this sort of experience through someone else's, um, you know, favorite things that kind of puts you in a, a newer sort of place to appreciate them, uh, whether that's, you know, a friend who's alive or somebody who's passed on um, or for ourselves who we want to just know that after we go, we've left, you know, all these little things that might seem like, you know, a little flippant during the day or what have you, but you know what, after someone's gone, I mean, it's too late to ask them what their fourth favorite song is or something like that. So everything carries so much meaning. So yeah, we're just trying to basically make a safe little bubble for people to put all the stuff that's brought a smile to their face uh, so that people can visit it. That's about it. That's really cool. I had a little project last year that I decided to start somewhere in December of 2019. I'm a photographer. I used to do scrapbooking. And that's all. And I, I kind of stopped because we have one daughter. And it was like, oh, you know, here's the beginning of the year and here's the spring thing and here's the summer thing and here's back to school and here's birthdays and here's Christmas and then repeat. And it was like, these are getting really boring. And when you go back through family photos and and even like if you go to a museum or something, you know, people really like to see like what was day to day life like in, you know, 2020. Mm -hmm. And I then heard a podcast where they talked about how postcards used to be a little slice of our daily life, whereas now we have social media. And I thought, oh, so, you know, social media is sort of like our our day to day movies, but we don't really have a way of archiving those easily for somebody else to to look at, you know, 20, 50, 20 or so years from now, which obviously you guys have created. So I decided to do. <laughs> A little tiny scrapbook of 2020 daily life before I knew that 2020 was going to be the strangest year ever. <laughs> and I've continued into this year, but it's like, man, life is very quiet. It's pretty boring. And it's like, now what's going on? And it's it's a totally different <laughs> day to day kind of. I mean, so I don't do every single day because my life is way not that interesting. But you know, it's it was really. You know, it started off with we decided to downsize and move and we moved from sold our house, moved into a rental temporarily. And then my mom was having issues and then she fell and broke her leg on March 8th last year. And she passed away on March 31st, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we started off 2020 with a bang and oh, we all know sorry. how it ended. So sorry to hear that. Thank That's you. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, 2017 started out like that, too. So I'm a little bit nervous for 2023. <laughs> <laughs> but what you guys have created is sort of a, a digital version of what I did. And now I'm thinking I should because I, I actually glued photos into a book and the book is like instead of closing, it's it <laughs> stands right. way open. So I'm going to actually convert it to an actual printed digital book so that it's a little more manageable. But now I'm thinking I should somehow, and I have the I have the technology, but to record different little stories that go with like the pictures from our recent vacation. I need more projects. <laughs> right. Well, and it's it's funny to hear you say that too because uh, you know a lot of people do use it as a scrapbook uh, or. or um, especially whether it's it's for them or for someone that they love you know it is it, it serves more purposes than we thought it would and for for caregivers um especially we hear them say whether it's the connection that they have with their patients or whether it's um them seeing like just the difference in in attitude or in, when they're when they're starting to kind of sift through these memories um you know the conversations that kind of pop up and so um yeah it's it's 
I don't know, uh, as far as scrapbooking goes, we never really saw it as a scrapbooking idea. But as soon as people started mentioning that, we were like, yeah, it is kind of, it's right between the old fashioned treasure chest that you might have your heirlooms in and what's available today, like Instagram and social media, uh, you know, Facebook and everything. What we're trying to provide is something where we can honor these bits and pieces and have them safely stored so that, uh, you know, especially with yourself in California and us up in where we are in Canada, there's a lot of wildfires going on and a lot of things that, you know, we didn't realize again that we were creating a safe place to store. Like if if, if somebody's treasure, treasure chest goes up in flames or something and they, they didn't have time to grab it or, or a flood or all these sort of theft and loss, at least um, it, it isn't, it's not like a substitute for the physical item in your hand, but if you had that special thing that was handed down, that's in that chest, at least you can take a picture of it, take a little recording of it, um, you know, put a title and a description of what it means to you or where it came from. And uh, at least that you would have those elements at play if you were to lose all of these things physically. So yeah, it is kind of like, it's a digital scrapbook. It's like a digital, uh, you can leave your legacy, digitize your legacy. If you want to tell all the meaningful things that happened in your life or if you want to keep it nice and fluffy hey I like this and I like this and and that's that it's it's really up to the to the individual yeah and we should mention that uh we made it so that if you are a caregiver you can host multiple echo boxes so you can have one for you know all of your patients and then we have the ability to gift it so you know let's say they pass away and, and their family members want to ownership of the echo box you can gift it to another device and stuff so that's yeah. Our, About, our... Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, well, that was going to be my next question is, you know, obviously the, for those of us who are still cognitively fine, at least I think I am, <laughs> you know, this is a cool way. Like now I'm thinking I got to start my own echo box to do some of the stuff we've just talked about. And especially with, you know, like in our old house, it was easy. I knew exactly what to grab it was my husband's grandmother's hope chest which happens to be right there and it doesn't have all the photo albums in, in, anymore because it got too i had too much stuff <laughs> right but um we talked a little bit about how i could have maybe used some of the information my mom would have entered as a way of helping connect as she got further along into her alzheimer's so how how can caregivers either family caregivers or professional caregivers how can they utilize echo box to do just that to kind of help bring people out of the fog of alzheimer's and dementia a little bit i mean i know we can't do that a hundred percent but you know there was occasionally my mom would come up with a conversation and be like where'd that come from and and those would have been a lot had i been better prepared i would have been able to enjoy them more but sometimes they came so far out of the blue it was like i would my shock overtook my ability to think <laughs> fast enough to respond and right. keep bringing those out as much as possible. Right. right. Well, I think um, probably to address the question, I think the best way, I mean, everyone's going to use it a little bit differently. And I think the longer that we're out there, the more that we'll see the results from people who have gone through the different stages of their life. Um, because we, we can't fast forward the tape 10 years, but it would be interesting to see um, somebody who, uh, you know, maybe right at the beginning of uh, the dementia experience or uh, just, you know, while they're still able to put in lots of details where later it might be a, a struggle, we'd love to see what that kind of um, produces or, or how much that helps people. Um, but for now, we're so new that uh, the best way that um, to, c to connect, whether it's with your with your own life or with your parents, if you're building an echo box with for your parents or for a patient, is um, yeah, basically just to whether it's uh, you know five minutes a day or whether if, if you're doing it with them or if they're capable enough to to sit down with a tablet and start filling like filling out their own stuff, then that's great. Um, but we found out that it's just it's improving things like uh, like family visits and it's improving the the uh, caregiver patient relationship uh, you know uh, th that just connection that they have and it's um, if it's a new caregiver in a new situation they can take a look at a couple echo boxes and, and really get a feel for somebody and uh, know where some safe places are to, to strike up a conversation that's going to really kind of be a productive one and so I guess in a long-winded way I'm trying to say we don't know really yet um, as in the long term how how it's going to look but in the short term People are using it all in, in different ways. Uh, some of them retrospectively, somebody might have already passed away, but the family gets together and, and creates an echo box and they all contribute um, their ideas and memories so that, uh, you know, there's still, it's fundamentally the same idea. It's just, it wasn't created by that individual, but it's, it's really changing. It can, it can work in a lot of different ways. I could see that. 
I'm just, I'm like very excited to like start my own now, which is just, like I said, I need more projects to do, <laughs> but now's a good time. Cause like I said, we just returned from three weeks on the road. Thank you, by the way, Canada. We were going to go into British Columbia, but as we were planning in the late spring, late winter, early spring, I said, you know, the border is still closed. We don't know when it's going to be open. Maybe we should just turn around, you know, Olympic National Park and come back home. That's far enough, right? And so they opened the border the day we came home. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Yeah, that's okay. We, this was our first, well, my husband's first time towing a 28, well, any kind of trailer other than the police radar trailer. He was a volunteer for our police department. The, the radar trailer is tiny and light. A 28-foot travel trailer is not tiny or light. <laughs> Why right. he thought there was any comparison is beyond me. But those are the memories we should, like, you know, keep track of because they're not the ones you think about when you're looking back through the photos and all that good stuff. And those are the little, the gems, the little, the flavor that, you know, I think I, our daughter would appreciate down the road. I'm sure she doesn't even know that story. I mean, she knows about him pulling the radar trailer and she knows the fact that I didn't think we were going to get out of town in one piece because he slammed on the brakes before we even got out of our city. <laughs> it was like, um, the, uh, the estate planning book is in here. The name of the lawyer is over. She's like, I don't know. Why are you telling me this? I'm like, I think your dad's going to kill us. <laughs> well, well, we made it back in three weeks and we didn't kill each other and the dogs are good. So those are all the little funny stories that you don't generally put down in the scrapbook because not everybody's weird like I am. So I think, yeah, I'm going to, I'm just going to add one more thing to do. Right so on. what is the, I'm assuming you guys have your own echo box. Do you want to share little tidbits about what you've put in? Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. You want to, I, I always talk so much. So I get onto it. <laughs> I, I kind of take over. So go ahead. Yeah. Well, there's, you know, there's a lot of different categories. So I guess for me, I really like books. So that's the one that I tackled right away. So entering some of my my favorite books and what the story's about and take a little picture of, of the cover and everything like that. So um, and just slowly, you know, I've been slowly working away at it because it is, you know, in the end, there's something like 40,000, 4,000, 4,000. Well, at some oh, point, there could be 40,000, <laughs> 4,000 different uh, categories um, that you can actually fill out. Mm -hmm. So you're just, yeah, taking my time and enjoying it, right? Going over my own memories of when I was younger and stuff. And uh, yeah, for me, I mean, I, I love music and I love sports. Uh, so I've found that I spend a lot of uh, time when I am entering stuff in those sections, whether it's, uh, you know, memories of a, I don't know, of a race or whether it's a football match that I remember watching with my dad when I was a kid. Or, um, you know, if going to the music and I just talk about the albums that I've liked and what years that they kind of had you know, uh, an impact on me or what have you. And um, the fun part for us is to kind of see the different bits and topics that other people are interested in, because, I mean, we're going to have to evolve and take our feedback and add other topics because things are important to people. We don't know what exactly, like if, if we have to make a, you know, a paper mache section, because we keep hearing from people <laughs> that love that, then, you know, so be it. Here it comes. Um, but yeah, it's just amazing. It crosses, like you were talking about, not quite getting into Canada and crossing that border. And, um, and we're, we're trying to go down to the States too, but we're trying to see when we can because there's you know all sorts of different logistics that go with it. But coming up with this idea, we realized it, it transcends all sorts of different things like location. Uh, we can be echo box contacts no matter where we are in the world or um, there's no real age group that is going to, um, you know, uh, not have an effect on whether it's kids or middle age or, and, uh, you know, sex, it transcends like location time because once we're gone, it's still there. Uh, religion. I mean, all of us, all of us have memories and people that we want to be remembered or remember them. And so I just think that uh, it, it's a multi-purpose tool and it may be in a little time, we'll have a better definition of like the things it can do. But right now it's just like this kaleidoscopic evolutionary thing, uh, which was really bright and colorful and fun, but it's exhausting. And we're just trying to do all the right things at the right time. Because as Tana said, we're not, you know, we're not uh, business people or, or techie people. So it's, we're just trying to swim. <laughs> just trying to swim. You had an idea, you're going for it. And well, you know, the dynamic learning is really good for your brains. That helps prevent loss of neurons as we age. So, you know, just not only are you doing a good thing for the world, you're doing a good thing for your own mental health so men yeah. cognitive health mental health <laughs> thank you yes yeah, yeah. we, we haven't heard that yet so you know it's just great hearing hearing everyone's opinions and uh and yeah it's just it's it's been a blast 
Awesome. And how old are your daughters? Well, they're nine and 12 going on 13. So yeah, uh, right in the swing of things. We're in that sweet spot where we're, you know, it won't be too long until, you know, whatever dad, whatever mom and the doors, I mean, the, our oldest is already usually behind her clothes. That's where she is right now. Closed door, making her art in her room and listening to her music, which, you know, is cool and it's great, but you know, they're on their way. And so uh, we're just trying to capture everything that we can. And I guess we're the kind of people that, you know, we're not the biggest scrapbookers, but we do have a huge pile of our family photos and we try to keep them organized and it gets away from us because you take, you know, nowadays you take a million photos and they all go sideways and you can, can't find that one that, you know, you wanted to put into a special spot. And so I think what we kind of ended up making was just kind of like the highlight reel of your life called Echo Box and put every, all those things in there for, for safekeeping. Well, I had a client a hundred years ago, huge scrapbooker. And I ended up going to her house and I thought, I don't know how many kids she had more than I do. I only have one, but I'm like, this is an insane amount of scrapbooks. I mean, we're literally talking close to a hundred and they're all, you know, you know how we put them together. I I like, I used to do scrapbooking like that. Now I make cards because then you can get rid of them and you have no (laughs) clutter in your house. And, but I was like, what is somebody going to do with all of these? I mean, they're, they're works of art, they're your history, but holy, God, that's a lot of, I mean, it took up like the entire wall in her living room. It was insane. Double deck, you know, probably 10 or 12 foot wide, two and a half feet tall, maybe taller. Cause I think they were 12 by 12 albums. Oh my gosh. It was just, I was just shocked, just totally <laughs> shocked. Cause I was like, maybe I'm too practical sometimes, but only having one kid, it's like, I went through, let's see, this was in 2015 when you guys were having your idea. I had photos everywhere. And like I said, I'm retired, mostly portrait photographer. So we're going to delve into that for just half a second here. So bear with me, guys. Okay. (laughs) I have thousands of family photos, my own stuff that I got from my parents when my dad died, stuff I, uh, well, when my dad died, I got all of the stuff because mom went into memory care then. Then I've got more stuff um, after my grandmother died. It's like, oh my God. And 90% of it is not marked. It's not marked with who, what, where, when, why drives me bananas. And so anything that I couldn't identify went into one box. I've got two different uncles. I'm hoping can identify some of this stuff. And otherwise, if there was a stack of pictures of my, da- of my daughter, her dad couldn't remember what she was doing. How she, He didn't remember details. She didn't remember details. I'm like, Toop, trash. Like you're never going to remember. You're not going to remember. You don't remember now. You're not going to remember 20 years from now. So you got to label your photos, print them out, print out your favorites, put them in a nice little box. And I'm trying to talk about not clutter, but you know, we don't know what digital technology will, will evolve. I mean, I was around when it was film. My dad was around when it was slides. So, (laughs) you know, eventually we're going to have something different than we have now. And you don't want to lose all those memories because Nobody can tell what they are. And trust me, I've looked at negatives enough and it's like, ugh, it's terrible, it's difficult. But um, I was going to ask you one question, but you were going to say something, then I'll ask. Okay. Uh, I was just going to say, yeah, we don't know. It's evolving so fast and uh, who knows what the future holds. We thought that um, with virtual reality being such a big thing, we thought, well, where would that go with Echo Box? Would we be able to have one of those fancy cameras that has, you know, 24 lenses so that let's say if I wanted to, um, you know, let's say my 40th birthday, I wanted to set up a camera, have all my friends over and, um, you know, have that sort of like camera sitting in the corner. So it's recording everything. And then, you know, in the future, you could go back and, and f- watch that video interactively and look around the room and revisit that entire night and see people that aren't around anymore and hear what people are talking about and laughing about. Um, that's all down the road. But I mean, the way it's going, we it's smarter to say we don't know than it is to, to kind of pretend that we know where it's going so uh we're just trying to ride that wave and and um yeah and not repeat ourselves too much because yeah. man i'm not all that good at talking you know like you know i've never been a sales person or whatever and so i have that little light in the back of my brain listening to my you know i listen to myself talk and i'm like hurry up wrap it up sound more professional <laughs> be articulate and uh you know, we're getting there <laughs> not there it comes yet with sure. time so okay. there's been this thing recently i saw online where they're like what would i want if I had dementia. So I'm going to throw that question out to you guys. If you were diagnosed with Alzheimer's or dementia, what would you, how would you, how would you want the rest of your life to be? What would be important? What is important to you for other people to know? I hope that makes sense. 
That didn't sound very sure. grammatically good. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's an amazing question. I've never, never yeah, I been asked that. I guess first and foremost, comfort. Um, you know, I guess I'm putting my trying to put myself in my future shoes. I, I comfort. Um, you know, meaning. Uh, you know, uh, entertainment, and I don't mean you know flashy, bright. Let's go. You know, bright lights, big city. I just mean. Um, and maybe I've, my brain has been locked into Echo Box for too long, but it's like I can't kind of disassociate all of the stuff that would be in my Echo Box. That's kind of where I think a big comfort zone would be for me down the line. If I could no longer, like if there was a point where I struggled to remember my top 10 songs or top 80 songs, at least I'd have those. And now I'd go back and have, I mean, 80 songs worth of music has got to be, you know, what, almost half a day's worth or whatever, however long 80 songs would take to play. You know, that's a lot of time to kind of re remember what you loved and stuff so for me anyways I think familiarity and comfort I imagine that would be at the top of my list yeah no I agree I would want to try to capture those memories that I have and and the stories that maybe I haven't told yet and and get them all down and obviously I put them in echo box Mm -hmm. um yeah and time time to fill all that out you know hopefully it would be a slow progression and you'd be able to to get all of all of that stuff that you want to pass on to your kids and all those great memories. And like Tim was saying, then, you know, later on you can use those in your own therapy and, and try to remember what you were like. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey, reminisce about yeah. what, what it was that really made you tick. And uh, it, what, we, we're going to enjoy seeing what it means to other people. I think that's where like the proof is in the pudding. And so we can kind of talk about what we think it is, uh, you know, all day long, but it's just the, the, the greatest part is just hearing what it means to people and um, being thanked. We started to be thanked, but we, you know, there's took so long to, to develop it and to, to put the right pieces in the right places and to code it and to think of all the different angles of it. Um, so when it was finally out there and people had it in their hands and were thanking us, it was just like such a breath of fresh air that we were like, Hey, we we're through a part of the, you know, we're through a big stage of it. Now we can actually listen to, you know, some feedback. And so, yeah, I don't know. I get long-winded and my answers get a little away from me, so I apologize. That's okay. I do too. What what um what kind of feedback? What are people telling you that they really like? Um, just well, the, I think it's meant the most to the people who are immediately using it for uh, you know, something that has just happened in their life. Uh while we were developing, uh, we had some friends that lost some parents, and so it didn't quite get out in time for for them, but they were the first ones to use it in retrospect as a as a group sort of uh, let's get together and as a family and, and uh, whether it was over the phone or by Zoom meetings because it's been a difficult year but um, but it's possible you know they can they can put it all together and have that sort of realm and so I think uh, it's been we don't have that long of a track record yet but it seems to us that the more it means to someone immediately uh, it seems to be like instant not gratification but it's just like there seems to be more to it they see it faster they can see the value of it um, and identify with it much faster than um, your average person who listens to my, you know, five minute long winded spiel and can kind of picture it, but that, you know um, so yeah, I think, you know, necessity is like the mother of invention or whatever they say. So I think people that need it um, find more use out of it, but our whole idea is it's not, it's not an app about um, death or caregiving or you know it's it's a it's a celebrate life app and the longer it's around the more people can use it as they go through life then that's when we're really kind of going to see what what we intended uh with you know keeping in mind that we don't know where it's going to go but uh you know we we did have an idea in mind so we're going to try to stick with (laughs) well technology evolves so quickly i i it'll be a i think it'll be a fun ride you're going to be there's going to be a lot of dynamic learning, a lot of neuron growth for you guys in the future. So right that's on. really good. So we're embarking on, I don't know what phase of life we're in at this point. I give up. But like I mentioned early on, we in 2020, we sold our home. We've been parked here in a rental for a year and a half. I'm over that. So is there a <laughs> house hunting, homestead, uh, real estate section? Because... We're going out tomorrow to start looking. So <laughs> maybe I should start with that and put it in my echo box as a way of keeping track of what we're looking at. Because we're we might be moving to a different county, which is really freaky. Cause I'm a really strange person. I've lived in the same county my whole life. Right, yeah. right. 
Well, that, then you've got that sense of place then, right? And you know, and best of luck finding a spot tomorrow. If, if uh, you know, if you luck out, then that then that's great. I, just one thing that I feel like we should mention, only because mm-hmm. we kind of got burnt a little bit before on a podcast when we mentioned we were talking all about the ideas, and and then we started to get some users that were like but there's in-app purchases. This isn't totally free. This is, you know, so we have to, we have to make that our, you know, your listeners do know that it is free to download. There is a free section in it. You can add, uh, you know, descriptions and titles and links, but when you get to the point where you kind of think, Hey, this is a good idea. Uh, maybe I, I, I want to enter in some recordings and expand on what is in there. That's when the in-app purchases kick in. Um, and they're very cheap. The, the most expensive thing that we have uh, is a one year subscription. It costs about six ninety. Uh, US and that's what gives you the all the different topics the ability to make recordings um, it's about four I think it was 4080 stories if you add up all the little areas so that's 4080 opportunities to put a title a description a link a photo or audio recording and uh, a video recording so there's too much I don't even know if someone in a lifetime could fill that up but it's just there <laughs> for whatever they're interested in they can dive into it so um for your listeners uh, yes there are in-app purchases <laughs> and at the end of the way that structure works is at the end of that year that subscription um if you like what you've put in there then great it just kind of goes behind glass and people can still see it if you want to continue contributing to it and changing and shuffling things around then it'll be another you know 6.99 in 2023 or 2024 or whatever year we're talking about so we kind of got burnt there because we get excited about the idea and we don't want to, you know, con anyone or try to have anyone think that we're trying to do the old bait and switch or whatever. Um, it just, it did cost a lot to develop. And so there had to be some sort of like way to try to patch that back together. So, so yes, listeners, please understand, use it for free. And if you like it, that's great. But if you, if you want to, uh, to dive into it more, it won't cost you that much. And we're, we're trying to be as, uh, as, you know, as reasonable and accessible as possible to everybody. So. That sounds awesome. Well, I'm excited to check it out. And I think I'm going to make sure it's downloaded and I know how to use it before we go. Tomorrow is the, it's like the scanning. Our our best friends are most likely moving to this particular area and he's done a lot of the legwork. So he's going to, we're going up there together and he's going to give us, he's going to debrief us on what he's learned. So we know where to start because it's about two hours from here. Uh-huh. So still in California, can't, right. uh, I'm a multi-generational Californian. We cannot, uh, change that <laughs> right. despite yeah. the fact that what we're looking for is about mm, 50 to 60% cheaper. If I went to Oregon, right. Uh, right. But that's yeah. okay. Um, I, we're, we're sticking with, uh, there's a, a lot of their family has moved up there. So it's, it's kind of like, we're all just sort of moving that way. So it should be interesting. But that'll be a good way to keep track of it all. I like that idea. It's so, is there a, any last um, any bit any last bit of information before we jet off to the rest of our day? Uh, I guess we are only available on iOS at the moment. We are busy developing the Android, and that should be out late 2021. That's right. And yeah, um, just thank you, all you hardworking caregivers, for what you're doing. Um, it is appreciated. Although you know, I'm sure you don't get a pat on the back every day. Um, so yeah, um, please use echo box if you want to, and give us all the feedback you can, even the bad stuff. If you don't like it, we have to have that, that feedback is just as valuable too. So, um, so yeah, every, any, any, and every, uh, person that wants to check it out so much appreciated. And if you like it, great. Awesome. And I like how you said, you know, you've, you've entered like your top 80 songs. Music really pulls people in, you know, it pulls them into memories and kind of brings them back to reality, which is not really the right word, but for lack of a better word at the moment. So if in some unfortunate scenario, you know, you ended up with a neurodegenerative brain issue, that is something somebody could use to kind of help bring you back, a, you know, it brings them back a step or two. It never worked great with my mom, I think, because she liked to listen to talk radio. <laughs> she would have loved podcasts. But, you know, it's, it's fun. You're, you know, your daughters can look at it and laugh at your choices of songs because we know that's what's going to happen. Yep. <laughs> but, you know, if you had a stroke or traumatic brain injury or some, you know, something that affected you, that's a really great way to, to help, you know, facilitate some good caregiving moments. So keep that up. I don't have favorite musics because I'm, 
I go with the tide. I like some of the stuff from when I was a kid, which was in the 80s. And I like some of the new stuff. So I don't know how I'd keep track of all that because it changes. Sure. But, you know, that, that'll be interesting. And for books, I'd have to do a screenshot because I read all my books on my phone. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, yeah, well, I, anyone, go if ahead. Anyone to, if anyone wants to hear like the, the or like look at the Coles notes or the cheat sheet of what the app is all about, um, our website is echobox.ca. And then it, it'll do a much better job than me trying to like, you know, I'm just not so, uh, I'm not so focused or, direct, you know, I think I can go off in, in tangents. So anyone wants to learn about it, echobox.ca. And that's linked in the show notes. So you guys can just scroll, tap, right. go right to their website. It'll be great. And you can watch the video of the guy that sort of inspired you, the one that lost, for a short time anyway, lost the, the, the answering machine um, recordings of his wife, because that's really sweet. Don't, don't, uh, I watched that through breakfast this morning. <laughs> it's like, right. it's actually kind of a sweet way to start out my day. Anyway, I appreciate it because so many caregivers also write books, create apps, start podcasts, other things that my brain is slowly forgetting today. But, you know, it's kind of fun to talk to people that have created something because they kind of saw a need. And it's not just for people that are dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's, which makes it better for you. And, more appealing, I think, to people like myself who've been in both shoes. So I'm really excited to start my own Echo Box. I hope other people are also after this, after they hear this. And yeah, thanks so much. They've been bugging me on Instagram Jennifer. for a little while. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you thank so you. much. Yeah. Uh, it's been a, a blast to be on here and to meet you. So yeah. Thank you so <laughs> thank much. You. And, and when you get to come down to the States, Currently, at least for the next till July of next year, for sure, because that's when our lease is here up. We have a very nice guest room that has gone completely unused because of the pandemic. Oh, <laughs> oh well, hey, you know, the offer. that's very kind of you. I, we might take you up on that. That'd be great. Well, I'm up. 45 miles northeast of San Francisco. We're not too far from the train that takes you into the to Oakland, you know, Berkeley, Oakland, oh, San Francisco, San Jose. You know, because I'm out here in the oh. we we way out here in the suburbs. So if you ever have any uh, San Francisco meetings that you don't do via Zoom, let me know. We'll be yeah, around so for a little cool. bit longer. <laughs> love the idea. Show the girls a bit of the world and uh, California. It's been too long since we've been there, so I'd, we'd love it. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been to Canada since well, 2018. We were in Toronto. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that was it. That was our last vacation right. until this road trip. So we were well overdue. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, well, we'll come down and see you and you come up to see us and uh, great. We'll capture it all in our Echo Boxes. <laughs> That'll be fun. Awesome. Echo Box reunion. I love it. You Thank go. you so much. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.